Welcome, everybody, to the very first episode of Who's the Asshole? Podcast about myself, Rob Very, and my good friend, Helen. How's it going? Good, how's it going? Life is good. Life is good. I'm, I'm excited that we're finally getting to start, like, doing this and, and maybe yes. making it a thing. So, uh, it'll, it's a little different because both of us are used to kind of doing things live and streaming to an audience that can say yeah, stuff that's true. there. So this is definitely different. We're, but we're trying exciting. something new and it's exciting. Yes. So how this is basically going to work is we have a bunch of threads saved up from all over the place of basically people asking if they're the asshole in a various situation. We'll read it off, talk about it, read some other people's comments, go to the next one. And, and that'll be it. And we'll see how it goes. And we look forward to hearing feedback from people later, uh, seeing what they think on these uh, situations. And mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a good time. So with that being said, might as well introduce ourselves real quick. So like I said, my name is Rob Very. I am currently uh, in my mid-30s. I am a software developer down in Alabama. And I have I've seen a lot of shit myself, so I'm excited to... <laughs> uh, <laughs> tear into some other people's stuff rather than my own that's that's what i'll Very true. yeah that's what i'll certainly say uh helen if you want to introduce yourself to everybody hi my name is helen fung um i'm 30 i'm from toronto um i'm a streamer a mother of two cats uh i do freelance animation work design graphic designing and uh you know me and robbie we just like to talk about stuff a lot but this is better because it involves people we don't know yes right that, yeah. that's that's literally the key <laughs> so this is the key thing. <laughs> i'm i'm very i'm very hype about that particular aspect also for anybody who's watching this in video form uh, time to time you may see those very cats she spoke of in the background so you know if you want to leave a comment of the timestamp for anybody who's looking for the kitties <laughs> uh but i guess we could just hop right into it so i've got a i've got a hot fresh one right here both Helen and I have them pulled up, so you'll, you know, you'll see us kind of, for those watching instead of just listening, you'll see us kind of reading off of there, obviously. So here we go. First one. It asks, am I the asshole for refusing to give up my seat on a flight due to a person who has a guide dog and is visiting a family member in the hospital due to the fact that I have a dog allergy? Little little wordy title, but here we go. <laughs> and and I like it starts off with I won't be going into specifics, but then has all these other words. So you know. Yeah. <laughs> we off to a great start. Here. Yeah, it's a, it's a strong first one, but just just wait. Uh, since I'd rather avoid being identified, I have a severe dog allergy. I can have varying disease of severity when it comes to my reactions when I'm exposed to dogs. In short. Being in a closed environment with a dog is out of the question. Earlier today, I was boarding a flight with my friends, since we're all going on a vacation together. As I'm boarding, I find that one of the passengers is boarding with a golden retriever with a guide dog vest on it. I want to make it clear that I'm not questioning whether this was a guide dog or not. This was also a fairly small plane since the flight would only take around an hour. As mentioned, I cannot be in a confined space with a dog. I told one of the flight attendants my concerns since I could have potentially ended up in the hospital if I had to fly with this dog. The flight attendant informed me the woman with the dog, wait, informed the woman with the dog who oh, okay. goes okay. into hysterics. So she tells the woman she goes into hysterics, saying that she is visiting a sick family member and can't afford to miss her flight. I'm not sure how sick the family member in question was slash is. That's a, that's a slight red flag there, but anyway, the flight attendant asked if I'd be willing to miss this flight and catch the next one that would be leaving in around two hours. I was offered a seat in first class if I was willing to do this. I said that unfortunately I wouldn't be able to do this since I'd paid for my vacation. Due to the size of the plane, the dog would not be able to go in the hold. The woman started insulting my character, saying that I was heartless for putting my vacation over her sick family member. I got on the plane and sat with my friends. As I did this, a woman in a nearby seat told me that she wanted to inform me that 
I am the biggest bitch she's ever met. I didn't respond since I didn't want to cause a confrontation. My friends haven't said I'm in the wrong, but have kept making sarcastic jokes about the situation. Am I the asshole? You are the biggest asshole. <laughs> the, the red flags are so like apparent throughout this. And they keep trying to justify. I know. It's just like excuse <laughs> after excuse after excuse. Like, first off, you, you know what is really just so annoying is that there was a solution given. Right. And like, it wasn't like such a huge inconvenience for her to wait the two hours to catch the next flight in first class. Yeah. To accommodate this, right? Like, come on, like, what if it was your family member and you don't know how sick they are or how much time you have left with them? Or, like, maybe you're just, like, truly so busy and this is the only time you can really, like, visit them. Like, can you not be that, like, empathetic, like, like understanding of someone else's, like, situation? Like, they, you, yeah, you they, are the asshole. And they clearly <sighs> need this, this guide dog. It's not, like, just a pet. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. And that was the one justification when they were like, uh, I wasn't questioning whether they were really a guide dog. It's like, well, it doesn't matter if you're actually doing that because you're putting your vacation yeah, that over was the thing. like being able to see the person being able to see a loved one who might die before they get there. Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> for this, this woman with the guide dog, obviously time is a very sensitive thing. Right? Like, we don't know how much time. We don't know, obviously, like, how sick this family member is. But the fact is, like, it is pretty evident, like, she needs to be on this flight. Right? And holy shit, like, they were v being very accommodating. Like, I still can't believe it. Like, you could have just waited the two hours. What's two hours to you? Right? Yeah, like, what are you, what are you missing <laughs> in like, the two yeah. hours? Like, uh, if if during your vacation that you're probably gonna be, like, having drinks laying on a beach. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, it, it actually, it doesn't even really matter. And then, uh, what, what was the part that, uh, again, about not sure how sick the family member in question was? Why did they yeah. think to even mention that? Like, is that to me is indicating that uh, if the person with the dog said, my family member has only been given, you know, two hours to live then they'd be like okay no no it's fine but if they were yeah, like right? well they You're were given a day to live they'd be like oh no 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 I, my vacation is still yeah, more important yeah. than your dying loved one hello like actually like wake up have a wake-up call you're <laughs> like the you're this whole world does not revolve around you okay like oh god i i i holy don't holy <laughs> there was a there was a person uh who who a friend of mine who sent a tweet out uh about uh, this is related to the pandemic about people brought people were sick with covid and, and got on a plane and brought the virus to the last yes. place on earth that yes, still didn't I, I have a case too. and yeah. i just said this just i know this is way less severe but humanity will be the downfall of humanity <laughs> like it's, yeah i don't i don't know what people are thinking and then this person says i said that unfortunately i wouldn't be able to do this since I'd paid for my vacation. What is okay. that? What does that, that mean? That if, they, if they won the vacation, then they would be like, oh, no, I can, I can do it. I didn't pay yeah, for right? it. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> like I said, it's just like she's just fine. Or sorry, I don't know if it's a she, it's a he, whatever. Like, you know, like it's just this person is just like throwing out a lot of excuses and justifications for their own situation. Right. And it's very apparent. And it's just like, are you hello like you you didn't just pay for your vacation you're not the only person that paid for your vacation you paid for the flight right but everyone else on that flight also paid for their flight exactly. aka the woman with the guide dog hello just oh god the all, it's just all it's all such a giant disgusting mess and kudos kudos if the person who was in a nearby seat that actually turned to the I, the yes. other and said you are the biggest bitch i've ever met Oh Honestly, God! I feel like I would, I, I wouldn't have said that out loud, but I'd be just like throwing glares and like, really, really, bish, really. If if you've ever been on a flight that like had a lot of turbulence and then it lands and people clap, maybe that's a white people thing, but people clap. 
Yeah. I would have clapped at this woman. I would have been like, yes, yes, yeah, agree. Yeah, know, Strong right? agree. And like another thing is like her, her, or like their friends, sorry. I keep thinking it's a female because, she, you know, the woman said I'm the biggest bitch she's ever met. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. But I'm assuming it's a female. So, but yeah, the friends didn't even confront this friend. Do you not want oh, to hold your friends you accountable? You know, that's true. That, that kind of baffled me too. Like, it, it was kind of evident because, like, she mentions here, my friends haven't said I'm in the wrong, but have kept making sarcastic jokes about the situation, which the way I see it is like, okay, they're passive aggressive, probably like you. Yeah. You're, yeah. It's, you, it's indicative as to why they're friends. And it sounds yeah. like a group of confrontation averse people. Yeah. Right. Um, or, or a bunch of, but the, clearly, they, like some of them don't agree with the situation and how it was handled, right? Like the way I see it is like two hours. What's two hours to you? Like for example, yeah. like uh, last year, I made three trips, right? And all trips had layovers, mm -hmm. uh, spanning between anywhere between an hour to three. Mm -hmm. it, it's not that long. No, oh, wait, honestly, it, it goes by so much more quick than you think. Yeah, for a layover, yeah. and she only had to wait two hours. Uh, I, if I was one of the friends, I probably would have just said that to them, and I know, just right? and just been like, is, "Hey, listen, anything. two hours isn't bad." You know, turn to the flight attendant. Like, would I be able to get a similar deal or go on the same flight as my friend so that you know right? my friend's None not of alone? The friends... And let's go. This isn't crazy. And then, then there would be a conversation like, "Hey, listen, um." How do you expect to be, like, I feel like the odds of some kind of dog being on a plane aren't as low as one might expect. <laughs> so, oh my god, so when I was traveling right before the holidays, uh -huh. right, pet carriers everywhere, baby strollers everywhere, like, it's just, that is something you, to expect, and if you're very, like, you know you got an allergy. Wouldn't you be prepared? Yeah, I, I don't... Like, wouldn't you be, like, stacked on, like, Claritin, Benadryl, or whatever? Yeah, like, yeah. Wouldn't, it, shouldn't you be whatever prepared they for those need. situations? Yeah, because what if you're on vacation? You don't know. Right? You should be always prepared for the worst. Right. So, like, was she just expecting... Uh, during this entire vacation, I'm never going to encounter a dog. Yeah, and, and from the sounds of it, the other person did not get kicked off the plane, and... They said, person in a nearby seat said they're the biggest bitch. It sounds like they just took the flight anyway. And since they wrote this post, they didn't die. So, <laughs> I, I gather it wasn't as awful as it, like, they caused so much of, of a problem. I understand the initial ask, like, hey, I have a severe dog allergy. I think there's this, like, you know, kind of big dog for a plane. Yeah. You know, is there anything we can do? And they got the offered for first class on the next flight there you go and that could have just been the end of it you could have just taken it or been like eh, i can't really and just sit down and don't cause any more of a fuss and then the other thing to me is is this this phrasing so i i don't know if you've seen this video it's uh, from psych to go about manipulation Great so channel. yeah I just watched that last night. yeah they're they're absolutely fantastic and they you know, gave a whole bunch of things about finding out if, if a person is manipulative, like signs. Right. And this just screams a man, like a manipulative statement written by the, the person very who... very manipulative. We've determined is oh. the asshole, because why would you call this, this person who started to, you know, cry and break down, like, in hysterics? Like, to me, if I'm like a third party, and I'm watching from afar these two people, and I knew about this woman and the person dying and all that, and I saw them, like as the other person described going to hysterics i would call it breaking down like yeah okay, okay. and every right to break down in that moment like just think about it like your family member how much time they have left right you, you have to you know go through clearance when you go through the airport especially since this was this post was four months ago so it was during the pandemic and with i don't know if you've like 
flown out during this pandemic but no, uh, i've barely they, gone out depending <laughs> on where you're coming from or where you're going there is paperwork involved like whether they want to mm -hmm. check if you're fully vaccinated or if you have a negative uh test result or just like stuff like that you know and especially when you're traveling with um a dog whether it's a guide dog or your pet or whatever it is mm -hmm. they still need to go through security and they need that clearance and it does take time it's not a smooth process and you don't know how busy it is going to be at the airport. So you always have to be prepared for the worst. So this poor, this poor woman probably is just going through so much. Obviously, is trying to you know take things you know one thing at a time. You know she's like, I gotta get to the airport. Yeah, trying to, to keep it together, right? Keep it together. You know and they had to book the tickets. Was. They had to find you know the yeah. flight for, with the dog. They had to make sure that they got there in time. And now they're right. they're finally there and they're on the plane. And they're like, okay, they're all I got to like, do is okay. Get take off, flight. land, then I can do what I need to do and hope exactly. I can move quickly enough to be able to. And if it's a guide dog, you know, there's a good chance they have some level of a disability, right? So how difficult right. it is it is it to get from point A to point B normally anyway? So they're just barely keeping it together. And then somebody puts up a fuss about this dog on the plane exactly and, it, and it's essentially demanding that you leave like no <laughs> i and I would, I would break down too yeah 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 for for people that may not know helen and i very well yet we share this trait where uh, we could be perfectly fine and then just what well, that one perfect thing happens or is said and we're just gone and we're just yeah. crying yeah. and we're that crying would, that would be the tipping point right there. yeah yeah i mean i probably like i probably would have been my eyes would be visibly like i've been crying you know trying to deal with getting to this family exactly. and i identify exactly. with this like my my folks you know i live down in alabama which is a complicated story but they live in pennsylvania so if, like something happened, I needed to go to see them. God, it's just getting me <laughs> feeling some type of way right now. I I don't know. Like I would tr be rushing trying to trying to figure it out, and I don't have any, you know, additional issues. Like sometimes you need a seatbelt extender. That's it. <laughs> so like I I can't. I, it makes me so annoyed when people use phrasing like this to try to sort of weasel their way out of things. Like. I well, like. And like they're obviously from the beginning, right? They already wanted to be like, I'm not the asshole in this situation. There was a narrative, right? Right. right. Like the person wrote this post, probably read it over, was editing it. You know, oh, that that probably sounded really bad. Let me put this in. This sounds way better. So like there, yeah. There's right. You know, and this this. <laughs> this makes me realize something because I've. You know, we, we've both read so many of these type of posts in our time. And, you know, this is the first episode of this podcast, so it's kind of early to mention. But for people who are unfamiliar with, with reading posts like these, there is a trend that I have noticed. When the person writing it believes that they are not the asshole in any way and everyone's ridiculous, they yeah. write it in this kind of manipulative type of way. But when the person, like, most likely isn't the asshole... They're so worried the that they are. So they're yes. giving every single detail and it seems like objective. Yes. And it's exactly. so funny. So you can kind of you can kind of pick up on it, though, as people will learn. And we have learned sometimes every now and then there's a curveball. And you're like, oh, oh, I was hating you. But no, no, no. You are probably an asshole. But this that is way more screwed up than what you were saying. And, yeah. and, and we'll probably get to those. It does happen. Uh, all right, I, I wanna I wanted to uh, just <laughs> I guess to sum it up, this top comment that's that's on here. All right, uh, let's see it. It got a bunch of awards. Uh it says, You're the asshole. One, both you and the woman paid for your spot on the flight, so you I are no that. more entitled to your seat than she is to hers. Two, the airline offered you a perfectly reasonable accommodation for the two hour delay. Three, assuming the woman is sincere, her need to be on the flight was greater than yours. And four, when you have an allergy of that severity, you should be informing the airline. It would have been so easy to be nice here and cost you almost nothing. <laughs> almost <agree>. nothing. <laughs> I agree. Well, that's what I mean about like, like, we all make those, like, we've all like throughout talking about this and discussing this have made these points. And like, that's what 
bothers me is like she knows she has this quote unquote severe allergy. How come you didn't tell the airline? It's like, I don't it's even simpler now. I think even a lot of the times, even when if you book online, there's, there's a, always there's like a line a little, for that. Yeah, there is. Like yeah. there's no like to include. Right, right. <laughs> I oh goodness. All right. Well, so that's 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 how this is going to go for anybody listening or watching. We're going to be going through these, uh, I think, and it's it's up to you uh, if you'd like to just do one more and yeah, call good. it. Okay. All right. So we got on, time for one more. On to the next one. Here we go. Uh, actually, Helen, if you would like to read this, that would be all right. Great. Oh. 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 Sorry, I just I just peeked at the title and that that <laughs> caught my interest. Okay. Mm, it's good. Am I the asshole? for calling the police on my client. Oh, okay, all right. I, a 28 female, do babysitting on the weekends to make some babysitting, uh, oh, sorry, she does babysitting on the weekends to make extra cash. Okay, I see the, the sentence got a little messed mm -hmm, up there. Mm -hmm. uh, there is one family I definitely should have phased out by now, but the kids are cute, and if I don't have another job, it's easy money. My issue is the mom is never on time. She used to not give me return times, but finally I started asking as it made it impossible to get anything done on the weekends. I go babysit so she could go to brunch, but she'd be gone from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. 7 p.m. My whole day was gone. <laughs> After that, she started giving me times, but never stick to them. She wouldn't even call to tell me. She'd just stay out. On Saturday, I got to her house at 6 and she was supposed to be home by 9. I told her she needed to be on time because I had plans to go out with friends. I was even getting ready at their house after I put the kids to bed. She promised. Okay, fair enough. Of course, nine rolls around and she's not home. I call her, no response. Text, no response. Another hour, nothing. Still calling and texting. Finally, it's midnight. By this point, my plans are long ruined, but I'm pissed and exhausted. I call her and leave a voicemail saying if she's not home in the next hour, I'm considering the kids abandoned and calling the cops. I also text her this. I try calling her 30 minutes later and it goes to voicemail on the second ring. I text her again and she leaves me on red. If she had reached out saying, hey, I'm staying out until X time, I would have stayed. I don't know any of her family nor the father of the kids, so I can't call them. I gave her a grace period of 15 minutes and tried calling again. Finally called the cops, not emergency line. They showed up and I showed our agreement in text from earlier in the week confirming that she'd be home by nine. They tried contacting her, didn't answer. I was dismissed and they took the kids to the police station. I go home and go to bed. I was awoken at 3 a.m. by a frantic call. It's her, where are the kids? Why am I not here? I tell her I followed through on my threat, checked the police station. She cursed me out. I hung up and went to bed. The next day, she sends me an essay saying the kid's father was called and there's a DCF investigation launched against her. She called me every name under the sun, but I didn't think I was wrong until I spoke to a friend with kids. She said I should have just waited it out and refused to ever sit for her again. She asked if, she, if she's potentially losing her kids was worth me being petty. Okay, that friend is stupid. <laughs> I think I'm sorry. I just that was the first time I ever read this post, and it, okay, it it this is uh, this isn't just orange juice. This is full pulp. This is totally loaded, outstanding, wow. yeah, and absolutely ridiculous. Okay, so first of all, <laughs> let me let me let me take a stab at this. Uh, for, first of all, the very first time, the very first time that this mother was late. That would, to me, as a babysitter, and I have babysat in my life, uh, I would have said, this last time that happens, it happens again, that'll be the last time I sit for you. Right. Okay? So, not blaming no this boundaries. girl, not blaming this girl. That's You know, you could be wanting, it's the first time, you know, right. things can happen, you want to give, like, people the benefit of the doubt. Like, I completely get that. Right, right. So, uh, that's, this is the only 
thing I'll say about the babysitter, <laughs> because yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, the babysitter is not the asshole in this situation. No, I agree. Definitely not the asshole. So <laughs> having <sighs> so, oh, my, uh, God, there's my, so much to break down in this one. <laughs> my pet peeve is when people don't respect other people's times. Yes, yes. Or not. It drives me insane. Yes. Like, are you kidding me? Yes. Like, I think it was like. It was fine for the babysitter to, even if, like, eventually it took them a while to figure out, oh, shit, this mom doesn't got her shit together and, like, never, like, says, or, like, keep her, keeps her word, basically, like, saying, oh, yeah, I'll be back by seven, and then ends up being back by nine or whatever, right? But, like, when she realized that and was set, trying to set those boundaries and be like, hey, you gotta, you gotta, like, let me know when you come back. Or at least tell me, like, I'm sorry, you know what? I thought I would be back home for nine, but I'm going to be out for another hour. Like, just let the person know. That's at least, you know, like, like, the least you could do to be respectful. It, to it's, be respectful. it's the absolute bare minimum of exactly. treating a person like a person. So yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I. A thing that that some people may not know is that for five ish, four or five ish years, I actually worked with special needs kids, and that was the thing I did. I also took them out in the community to like parks and stuff and community events, and, and it was just like me, me and the various kids, and mm. that involved coordination with parents so that I knew when I could be there and I knew when to have them home. Right. And if there was ever a situation that came up when I was late on either end before the time i'm supposed to even be there they've already got a message from me that i'm going to mm -hmm. be late on either end and most of the parents i worked with were the same way because there were some situations when the parents said yeah if you're going to take them out to this park i would like to pick them up from that park you don't have to come to the home and we'll be there at a certain time right and pretty much 95 percent of these parents always messaged me if they were running late and when they got there they would always feel so bad about it and i was like okay that's reasonable but for that other five percent like we have protocols like the agency i worked for there was there's protocols in place you know i'm going to continue billing for the time so that's kind of our backup but there's like a limit to that where yeah. uh, we're we're basically, if I recall correctly, instructed to take the kid way up to the agency, which was a, a town like 30 minutes over from where most of the kids were, and put them there. And the parents have to come get them because that's not that's not what we do. So yeah, because clearly, like when you hire someone for a job, it's going to be right. x x time. Right. You're being paid for x x time and not right. beyond that time oh god i now i'm wondering did she get paid yeah or, yeah or well she... i mean for that last one i there's no way she got paid for that there's no <sighs> there's no and i'm imagining I'm this sorry, you're a horrible you're a horrible parent for doing <laughs> shit like that i'm imagining this mother you know if these if they took these kids to a daycare the daycare closes at five and when the daycare has to stay later because parents are late you get charged for it and then exactly. there's a certain time when the daycare has their own protocols. And I believe some of these daycares for the United States anyway, they involve the police or they called it DCF, but, but basically like child welfare, you know, kind of agencies that are involved and that can involve the police, <laughs> you know? So I, I don't know how, like what this woman, it seems to me, I think this is the crux of it. This is why I think they're not the asshole. It seems to me like this babysitter actually did more than just the right thing because this mother sounds generally, genuinely neglectful of her children. I agree because period. one doesn't pick up her phone, doesn't reply to messages left on read as written in the post. She, the babysitter did everything she could to reach out to this person. And you know what? really really gets me is like she could have just contacted the mom once and been like you know what fuck you i'm gonna call the police she multiple times kept trying to reach out to the mom tried and tried and tried 
right? Like, that's the part that really gets me, is like, repetitively. Like, she didn't have to, but she kept calling the mom again, sending another text over and over again. Nope. And voicemail, too. Nothing. And you know what's wild to me is when the police tried calling the mom and she didn't even pick up. Yeah, because I think for the most part, the phone, the, the like, the, the caller ID says it's out of the police. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so right. like, what, what was so dramatically important and distracting that you can't like like There's remember you have children <laughs> like hello <laughs> your priority is your children what like it doesn't matter if you even if like i would imagine as a parent even if you go out if something happens back home you drop all the plans and you go home and you take care of your family i would hope that is the case with most people out there i would right ideally that is the situation you that would just is the ideal everything. situation like, I, i'm just saying ideally in the situation you would just drop everything go home clearly <laughs> not with this mom she's and you know what i if she loses her kids i don't think like why would she care because clearly she didn't care enough to pick up the mm. phone reply to the text especially i can answer that i can answer that an emergency right <laughs> from the babysitter you don't know right so oh. so you said uh <laughs> you said would would they care or or how do they not care so the the reason why the frantic call happened i don't believe has anything to do with the welfare of the children this mother doesn't want her peers or husband or father of the children whatever he may be to know that she's awful they don't she doesn't care that the kids are suffering. She cares what people think of her and yeah, the word that gets out. That's what that's what I usually get from clear, these situations. I think it's clear that this mom cares more about herself than about anyone else. It is very, very evident. That's why, you know, like I, the babysitter in no way is the asshole. Not even close. No. no. Because what has been thrown her away from this mom and the thing is, she doesn't even have a problem with the kids. She, she's like, I like the kids. They're cute. Right? There's not an issue with the kids. It's the mom. Mm -hmm. she, is what, how, how hard is it to respect someone's time? Yeah, and, and like the kids could have been like laying down for bed anyway, not knowing anything was really wrong. Exactly. So it, it, there it was... did sound like that was the case, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it does kind of suck that, you know, they had to go to the police station, but... You know, and maybe that's the other thing, because now the mom is worried that the kids finally understand that she sucks <laughs> as well. And that's the only yeah. thing she cares about the kids that what they it's all about her. Like you're saying, it's all it, about yeah, it is. She's it's, only it's thinking all about her. Exactly. Uh, and it's just like. Uh, like. If this is the wake up call she needed, then then it's well deserved. Please wake the fuck up. Y yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about the mom, not the babysitter. I'm talking about the mom. The mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He needs There's, a reality check, like a big one. The, here's the thing about about that. While that is ho that is hopefully something that comes from this, unfortunately, in a lot of these situations, the, a wake up call is impossible. They're they're already That's so far a gone. Lot of people that don't think they're the asshole will never think it's their fault. Right. It's, it's right. Yeah. That's the thing. A lot of people do think they're the main character in their own story, and they're never the one at fault, and they'll always be the one to point fingers at other people yep. without any thinking no self-reflecting and it's yep. clear with mom is just the oh god oh god i'm i'm gonna lose my shit <laughs> i i sense it i noticed the uh, increased levels of flailing there <laughs> I'm, I'm going to lose my shit. <laughs> oh my god it's just, please it it's something go does uh, a lot and goes a, a long way it it does Gosh, and please. and what a lot of these what these parents either don't realize or don't care about is that literally everything they've ever done involving their children has an effect on them of and course whatever that may be it could stay with them for their entire lives and you are molding these young people's minds you are determining their habits and their their you know things they're good at and their flaws it's they are fully dependent on you for a time and you are their primary you as a parent are their primary influence for doing those things it's not just the friends and other environments 
it's it's you you know you and the other parents so the the fact that this is way more common than we'd like to hear is very disturbing and there are plenty of agencies and groups and charities that are trying to help combat this but i just that's that's why they're there like there's nothing else that you can do about it and it's it's a, you know it's a sad truth oh but my. but then there's people like this babysitter who probably doesn't realize that and hopefully does from reading the comments which which i'll hop into uh, uh one of them here in a second they saved those kids from yeah. something much worse now there's always a chance those kids go into the system and, and other stuff happens but if if it's mandated and you know the government agencies involved help take steps and the mom does get help in order to be a better mother then you know they could go back and everything could be okay but for the most part it's unfortunately going to be better for them if they're in a system versus just being some forgotten you know that, that is a sad truth. Yeah. And the thing that gets me about this is so sometimes on these posts, the person offers an explanation for why they might be the asshole. And usually people who are not the asshole are the ones that actually fill this out. <laughs> uh, and the way the way the babysitter said it was the action I took that should be judged is calling the police versus just waiting for her to come home. That action might make me an asshole because it could affect the custody of her children and really. Nothing was stopping me from staying with them. And I, th I think we've already touched on it, but I just wanted to mention, no. like, that's how they that's how they feel about it. And that's right. that's how they see, like, well, I could have just stayed and then had a conversation. She uh, already stayed so, so many times before. Yeah, how many more times are you going to do it? It's it's not it's not going to do anything. And they, they took the right step. And here's exactly why the top comment, not the asshole. One thing I've learned from true crime is the wait 24 hours to file a missing person thing is a myth. She wasn't where she said she'd be when she said and wasn't responding to any communication. Yeah. She was, in fact, a missing person at that point. And that's the mother. <laughs> yeah. So. And then there's a follow-up uh, that this person has a firefighter. They witness firsthand the tragic results when someone fails to make a phone call in an abusive or neglective mother. The end results of not making the calls are small sized coffins. And it's saddening, terrifying. It is. And angering that, that this sort of stuff still happens. <sighs> Fuck that mother. <laughs> Kudos to the babysitter. They, they did the right thing. And I, I hope. They definitely did the right thing. I hope that they, you know, saw the follow ups to all these. Or for the, the, the comments, okay. and they, they do that, and I hope the kids are okay. Yeah. Uh, luckily, <laughs> as we move forward, not not all of them are this rough <laughs> in terms of posts, but we will have some that will make us even angrier, <laughs> and we will have some that make us chuckle with how ridiculous they are. With that being said, I think that's a good place for us to call it for the first episode. Would you agree? It was good. <laughs> it was good. Two two really good posts. So two really good posts. Oh my god! <laughs> I, saw, I both posts had an asshole involved for sure. One was definitely the asshole. The other one turned out they were not the asshole, but the other person definitely was. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, I guess we could wrap it up there. Not gonna lie, I haven't really thought about how to wrap it up, but. I guess we could say thank you everyone who watched or and or listened. We appreciate it. Let us know what you think. You know, if you have any of your own posts to share, wherever we post this in podcast forum on YouTube, you'll be able to let us know via comments or contacting us. You could, of course, contact us on our Twitter accounts. Uh, mine is at very good, V A R Y G O O D E. And I'll let Helen give hers. My Twitter handle is at underscore doomsday gal. G A L. Perfect, perfect. Well, Helen, thank you so much. I think thank we're in me. we're in for a ride with this series. 
<laughs> it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. All right. See y'all next time. Later.